When it comes to ovarian cancer, the numbers are scary. 2,800 Canadian women will be diagnosed this year. Over half of them will die from it. And health specialist Leah Serich is here now with why it's so important to understand the early symptoms of the disease in order to improve those numbers. Yeah, so that's what it's really all about, is improving those numbers. And really, the question is, is that it's diagnosed at stages three or four, generally right now. So that's end stage cancer. And the reasoning is, is that the symptoms of the disease are so vague and it's really difficult difficult to diagnose. So often it can be up to the patient, in fact, to push their doctor and say, hey, what about ovarian cancer? You know, I heard this on television. I wonder if this is, in fact, what could be going on here. And I met a woman. Uh, her name is Amanda Nelson, and she really knows all about this. She, in fact, had to really push her doctor forward with the idea of taking her symptoms uh, more, more uh, seriously, certainly. So she was diagnosed with ovarian cancer three years ago and at stage three. And she had surgery and aggressive chemotherapy and is currently in remission but had she not pushed her doctor she likely would not have survived so this is what we're talking about so these days you know Amanda really wants women to know their own bodies know their own normal and to understand the symptoms of the disease and some this is of course something Dr. Greg Nelson a specialist in ovarian cancer he wants women to understand this as well it's really about persistence of symptoms and new symptoms so um, you know, everybody on a day-to-day -day basis uh, may be experiencing a little bit of um, fullness or, uh, you know, swelling or sometimes women describe feeling bloated. Um, you know, if you feel that way one day and the next day you wake up and it's gone and, you know, I, I don't think really there's much to worry about, but it's about persistence, persistence of symptoms such as bloating, as I said, where the, um, maybe your belt size has increased over the last couple of months. Uh, despite the fact that you might be trying to lose some weight. You can see how those symptoms do sound vague. And like we've all talked about, oh, I do feel a bit bloated today or that kind of thing. But it's about the persistence of those symptoms. So often you'll get those symptoms, but you'll wake up in the morning, as Dr. Nelson said, and you feel fine. So that's not the case here. This is a persistent feeling of fullness or pressure in the, in the pelvic area. So it's all about persistence. And Dr. Nelson says if you have these persistent symptoms, it's not unreasonable to ask your family doctor to investigate this further. So like Amanda did, you know, what about ovarian cancer? Can I get an ultrasound of my my ovaries something that's really quite easily done so you want to get that ultrasound done that's a great place to start because sadly there is no screening tool for ovarian cancers for example the pap test is for cervical cancer mm. not ovarian cancer and I say that every year because I think a lot of women get still get confused about that there's also no definitive blood test for it they do use a blood test to help with diagnosis but it is by no means a screening tool uh, so who's at risk what are the risk factors let's go over the risk factors so usually it occurs in women age 50 or over and women with a family history so this is a first degree relative so what's a first degree relative so this is a mother sister or daughter that have had ovarian cancer or breast cancer or even bowel cancer so those are the things to keep in mind um, so it's all about catching this cancer early and right now if it's actually caught early which doesn't happen very often but if it is caught early the cure rate is like 90 to 95 percent currently that's not happening so the cure rate is about 15 to 20 percent that's most common so very insidious disease and this is why Amanda is so passionate about raising awareness for the disease she doesn't want any other woman to go through what she did it's pretty earth-shattering I uh, got in my car and drove around for about two hours just processing it and still took weeks to process it uh, the hardest part was telling my family it sucks <laughs> It's terrible. Uh, this is why I feel very strongly about getting involved with Ovarian Cancer Canada, with the Walk of Hope, with uh, volunteering, because I don't want anybody else to ever have to go through what I did. Isn't so that young. I know, she's so young. And in fact, that was one of the things that was happening with her doctor. She said, oh, you're too young to mm -hmm. have this. But that's not, in fact, the case all the time. So Ovarian Cancer Canada, they are having their Walk of Hope. It is this Sunday, September 13th, at North Glenmore Park. And of course, this is Ovarian Cancer Canada's biggest fundraiser of the year. You can, of course, just donate. You can head out there and support them. All the information will be on my blog uh, or on Ovarian Cancer Canada's website. All right. Thanks very much, You're Leah. You're very welcome. Great to bring this information to light. Absolutely. Uh, Breakfasttelevision.ca for Leah's blog. And it's time to head on over to Craig Larkins, who's wrapping up 30 years at Big Rock.